So welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're joined by Atticus, who's my oldest son. How old are you? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> That's four. four. One, two, three, four. He's four years old. And he's joining us today because he missed me. We just got back um, from a six hour drive from uh, BPA's World Board Gaming Championships, which was held over in Pennsylvania. Uh, we went up there Friday. Yeah. And we were there for fr kind of Friday evening, Saturday, and we just came back at Sunday. So we were there for two nights, uh, kind of a full day, and then a couple of half days on either side. And wanted to just kind of give you a debrief of what we experienced, what WBC is, what you can expect from it if you want to go, and kind of what we saw there this year, at least. Um, so, like I said, it's 2018, so if you're watching this in the future, hi. It's probably <laughs> not going to be very applicable to you. Um, WBC, so World Board Gaming Championships, they hold this like a week and a half long event. It started off a week ago, midweek last week, like I think like Thursday people were getting there. Um, they hold like the kind of the world championships, tournaments for a lot of, you know, some board games, a lot of war games as well, things like that. Um, they, there's some huge events that go on, which are really cool, we should talk about. Uh, but you know, it's also a convention, so there are all the different publishers and vendors of war games, and some some board game companies and some third party distributors are there <clears> as well. <throat> so you can go buy, buy a bunch of games. Well, what's nice, as opposed to a lot of other game conventions out there, is that it's tiny. They, yeah, it's they, they, like, attendance is two to three thousand yeah. people. Uh, it's a, it's a long time, it's like a week and a half, if you're already going all in, which is impressive. But. It was a small place. It's held at like a mountain ski resort, but obviously it's July. It is July, right? Yeah, I think it's, so. It's still July, uh, so there's no snow or anything. But you can go up there. It's you know nice, kind of alpine place in Pennsylvania. It's a really cool location, um, but it's just a lot of open gaming tables yeah. for war games, a lot of rooms. different events. You can sign up to say, "Boom, I want to play Empire of the Sun for a couple of days." There's a huge, something that's like iconic at WBC is they have a ton of people get together and all play a collective game of B-17 Queen of the Skies and they do it every year and they give out little medals for participating every year and, and I think it's these big events that they have like a Liars Dice tournament which yeah. is like crazy fun that they do every year that's iconic as well. So you got like you know, 100 people playing Liars Dice or the Rattler <sighs> Dice is incredibly loud and everyone's getting wild. And then they have like tournaments for like Pericles and MBT. They had a Pen Dragon. They had a tournament going on. Hands so. of Blitz. I, even but even like Terraforming Mars, there was a tournament, yeah. and a lot of people played in it. Yeah. So the, you know, it's the whole spectrum of gaming is there. We didn't do that part of it. No, we didn't participate in any tournaments or any of that. That's yeah. not why we went. We just went. It was our first time. We yeah, kind of went yeah. for the war games. Inaugural trip, and just to kind of scout out what it was like. So I didn't have any expectations going into it. We knew that yeah. some of the people we know, the game companies would be there. They'd have their kind of little stalls and vendors there and stuff. And there were a few designers going to be there. Um, Mo, there, from, were, there were a ton. Well, that was the surprise, yeah. though. So, yeah. Like you know, we knew Mo was going to be there from Mo's Gaming Table, and Nate Rogers from the Gimpy Gamer was going to be there. And that's kind of that's you know a few designers that we talked to to set up interviews with. And what was amazing is. For, the, for how few people are there, that's enough. There, there was so many board game, war game luminaries, that's what I want to say. Yeah, yeah. So many designers, so many publishers, yeah. just people from the hobby were there because they were all there just to play games. Yeah. And that's what I thought was really cool. Well, and, and demo their games. I yeah. Mean, a lot of them were there to demo their games specifically, but... Then they played games and were very yeah. cool guys. And you can only demo so much. Right. But then, like you'd see, like people who I consider like fam famous, <laughs> just like sat there to just playing a game. I'm like, that's right. so cool. And it helped me to keep grounded in the hobby that it's not like, oh, these amazing people. Yeah. So that was something that was really neat. Is how how <laughs> close knit this small place was. Yeah. So I had a blast. So uh, we wanted to talk about a few of just the the highlights of just a couple days that we were there. So we were kind of discussing on the car on the way home what our favorite moments were. So I want yep. to start with you. What was kind of one of your favorite moments? Sure. And we, we talked about doing only a couple, two or three, yeah. because there were a lot. I could probably make a list as long as my arm, but 
I think number the third, my third most favorite was meeting a couple of new designers, Dave Shaw and Ryan Heilman. Uh, they designed a game which has currently been picked up by Holland Spiel called Brave Little Belgium. It is a, war, a World War I game about the, the German invasion of France and going through, through Belgium. Um, those guys were really down to earth. Seriously, those guys really, are cool. Really cool guys. And you know, their game's pretty damn good. I, I enjoyed it. We played about a quarter of the game. I think we played two full days. Yeah. Um, very, I think, I don't know if I want to use the word to, word innovative, but it it's not a traditional war game. It's, you're trying to plan, and but meeting those guys was, was awesome. Yeah, that was they a really, really fun They were really great time. guys. And we've got a full interview with those guys we do. that we'll post here in a bit yep. as well. So check that one out. I think it comes out in 2019 from Holland Spiel. So that was, that was a really fun moment. I enjoyed that a lot. We spent about a, hour and a half with them and really enjoyed that yeah so i think if it kind of best three moments my third best was was honestly when we just first got there and and this is a shout out to mo from mo's gaming yeah. table we know him maurice through, fitzgerald we know him through kind of twitter and yep. interactions online he has a he has like a written blog as well and doing kind of break into video too when we got there he kind of showed up at the door and was like so helpful and so welcoming, and he, and he, that was taken out of his own time. He didn't have to do that. No, he didn't he, at all. He kind of ushered us in, showed us around for a couple of hours, introduced us, and, and like helped us find. Because the the one thing about WBC, it's held in a ski lodge that is uh, it's a labyrinth. So I, I think it was built like in the 1850s or something, and it it has been added on to and added yeah, on to, and so. it's very hard to find anything. In fact, we tried to find a room. <laughs> spent. 30 minutes trying to find a specific area. It was very difficult to find. Yeah, but, but we were tired. But and Mo, that's part of it. Mo showed up that first day and showed oh, us yeah. around. And I am so grateful because it showed kind of the love and warmth. And the connection. And the, and the community that we have here yeah. in the Wargaming yeah. world. That he just did that. Took us under his wing, showed us around, showed us to the vendor hall where we met a bunch of people we were supposed to meet with. We went out to dinner together. And we organized to do a few other things. We played games together the next day and did, did a few other bits and pieces. But I wanted to shout out to Mo. Thank you so much. That actually really meant quite a lot to me. Yeah, yeah. Because that was very, very kind uh, to kind of... Because we showed up I have no, no idea what I was doing or where I was right, going. Right, right. And it just helped it really ease me in and put me... Yep. At ease going I, that. I think really without funny. having him help us, I think we would have struggled. That first night would have been, like, been a waste oh, of time. Oh, so thank you, Mo. Appreciate it. Um, that was great. Yeah. I like that a lot. Number, number two moment for you? Well, number two for me, I have developed a relationship and a relationship with a designer that really was only professional uh, with, with interviews and, and different communications back and forth about his upcoming games. Uh, Greg Smith um, of the Hunter's fame, Silent Victory, The Hunted, really works on solo war games and does a heck of a job doing them. Um, we decided to meet up. We met up with him on Saturday, Saturday late, evening. early evening. And I am telling you, that guy is salt of the earth. Yep. Um, just an outstanding human being. Very gregarious, very talkative, very engaging. Set us at ease, put us at ease, helped us really look at, we looked at three or four of his games. We looked at Pacific Tide coming up from Compass Games. We played um, Night we, Fighter Ace. We played some of Pacific which Tide. Was, yeah, we did. We played Pacific Tide. He showed us Beneath the Med, and in fact, you have a... Which we've got a prototype copy of Beneath yeah. the Med, which took about a little bit. We'll get... Yeah. I'll see that from us. Um, and, and, you know, we had a couple of moments. He, he had a couple of very vulnerable moments with us, and I thought we connected pretty well. We actually went back, and, and we, we met with him. We had to leave. And we came back. I would have spent the rest of the evening uh, talking and, and hanging out with him, but we had other things. Yeah, we, we had, had other commitments, but like, he, uh, and it was so yeah. cool meeting someone who has so much experience. Yeah, both in life and also in war game design. Yeah, and he's designed like he designed Silent Victory, and I've played that game all the big ones to yeah. death, and it's so much fun. And you know, before we ever did anything in front of a camera, <laughs> it was it was like. 
oh, this designer of this game is almost like an abstract thing. Like, right. someone designed that and they're super smart to calculate all the numbers and figures and tables and history. And make it playable and, and, and historically accurate. And, but to meet the person behind that name that's printed it's on a box was... Awesome. It was really fun. And he he's... I think he was he's a retired army major? Yes. Yes. He was... A, and, and served in Afghanistan... Yes. I think he's, I want to say he served, he served two tours, I want to say. He was, he said he served in 91. I think he might have been in Desert Storm. As Maybe well. he was. I Maybe mean, he was. I don't know if that's true, but I think he said 91. Okay. But it, I, I'm telling you, I, I. That was such a cool few yeah, hours. Yeah, very in. interesting. And I think it taught me that these aren't just games. There aren't just designers behind these games. They're people. Yeah. They're people telling a story. They're proud of their games. They are connected to their games. And man, they're great people. I, I had a great time. And he wanted us to have fun with this game. He did. He that did. Was, that was, it, it wasn't, he wasn't trying to push an agenda. Nope. Or it wasn't trying to be like, is it good? Yeah. Is this? He was like laughing at our terrible roles in Night Fighter Race and just like having a blast with us. Yeah. We were trying yep. to yep. limp our way through that Yeah. It was, I think we had like seven gun jams. We were so. It was, it was Bad awesome. That game. Just every roll that failed, and we just had a la a blast doing it. Yeah, laughing the whole night. Great. Yeah, game. great. The humanity of, of a guy like Greg Smith, I very very awesome. Yeah, I'm glad I was able to experience that. I think my number two moment was, it was kind of like stars in my <laughs> stars in my eyes. I had like my little nerd moment there. Was we were sat down, we were sat down. Getting started demoing Gettysburg. Yep, yep. Which is a, it's going to come out in C3i32. It's designed by Mark Herman. A small Gettysburg Civil War game. Yeah, introductory log cool little game. Mark's teaching the game, and I kind of looked over <laughs> at the, at, like next to us because I was like, oh sweet, someone's playing Unconditional Surrender, and I had to look again. I was like, wait, that map's too small, and then I had a closer look. And it, it it said it said armistice at the bottom, right? And I was like, wait, what is this? And I looked up at who it was. It was Sal Vaster and his mm -hmm. son with their brand new prototype World War One Unconditional Surrender System game. Yeah. And I was like, my mind was like blown because they just arrived that day. Yeah. They come like just for the day. They planned to be there earlier, but like, what a coincidence it was. But Unconditional Surrender is like number two favorite game for me. And I, and I adore that game and the system so it's so good. And like I'm like, I'm just sat kitty corner for himself. And it was so, so good. He was such a nice, I then sat down with him and we had a chat. He, we played, he, he watched us play Gettysburg and I watched yeah. him play it separately. And then I came back, we did an interview about Armistice. You'll see that soon as well. And then you guys just talked for like 30 minutes. <laughs> we just talked. Yeah. Cause he was such a, he's such a really a good guy anyway. Like, such a good dude. And, it, you know, I've spoken to him through all of the Unconditional Surrender AARs I did and the video that I did. So I'd message with him back and forth about certain things about the game. But meeting him in real life, such a genuine, kind dude. And his son was really cool as well. Yep. He's got, he was like helping him, like, cut out all the counters yep. of the prototype. And so that was fun. But just something that was out of nowhere, that was such a serendipitous meeting... But I'm so glad that coincidence, I was like, that could happen. And it just, it was like, I was like, it's sad. I don't know what to say. Yeah. I was, yeah. Kind, of, I was kind of flustered at first. Yeah. But it was, that was a really neat, cool experience. And just, there was so many like that though, where it was just like, oh, what? It's Adam Starkweather. Yeah, we, we saw you know, like, I mean, oh, I, it's that guy. I, so much of that Ken, happened. Ken from Compass Games, Adam Starkware, Bill Thomas from Compass Games. I mean, we spent time with Uva Eichert. And it's a lot of these guys we communicate with on emails. So wearing the nice Players Aid t-shirts, people would come up to us and be like, oh, it's you guys. I'm like, oh, no, it's you guys. Yeah, like, right. You're the designers. Yeah. So there was there was a lot of that from me. And I was, it was, I don't say I was starstruck, but like at times I was. I was like, yeah. this, like you, this is like on another level. You designed one of these amazing games. That I love. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to gush about how great I am and like yeah. embarrass you, but like, I am, this is awesome. Yeah. This is already cool for me. <laughs> yeah, that, that, I that agree. was such this, I agree. this neat, we just, just sitting down and hanging out with someone like that. Yeah. So, so my number, I think our number ones are going to be the same. So, similar. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty much I'm the same thing. But so, so I, I made, 
we made several appointments. Uh, one of those appointments we made was to meet with Mark Herman. Yes. And we, we didn't really know what games we were going to try or look at. I know there was many conversations about playing Pericles or other games, which are great. But we ended up spending, how many hours did we spend with Mark? About six? Well, that, that was it. We we, had, we scheduled, hey, at nine, we're yeah. going to do this. And then we didn't plan anything. No. To see, and he cleared his whole schedule for us. Yeah, which was crazy. So, cool. so we played Versailles 1919, which is one of his upcoming games. Sitting there with, with Mo Fort Fitzgerald and Alexander and myself and, and Mark, I, that was phenomenal. What an experience to play an unpublished game that's coming up. From one of our, I think my favorite, I think your favorite as well, Yeah. designers, Probably. and just once again to have banter and fun going back and forth. and Great game, by the way. I mean, it was, it was awesome to play that game and have, have that time with him. And I thought to myself, in what world or industry or hobby or anything... Does that happen? I just don't feel like that happens anywhere else. Well, other industries are so big or so bloated. It's hard to meet the people behind everything. Yeah. But Wargaming's War relatively World smaller. Is, and, and that's something I learned was everyone knew each other. Like, yeah. We know David Heath from Lock and Load really well. Right. He was an intern. Mark Herman gave him his first Mark ever Herman. job yeah. back in the day with Victory Games. Small world. Just... All like, those connections, yep. Like Greg Smith and Sal Bastard, yeah. they go back 20 years. Yeah. Everyone yeah. knows each other, and that was, that was yeah. pretty cool. But yeah, playing that game, being with Mark Herman, and I, I'm, I'm going to brag a little bit. I won for Cy. I have no idea how I did. He, I got a lot of points. He won. Well, I got a lot of points. Yeah, got I was like, I won a football game because I scored the most points. points. <laughs> I got a lot of points because of a card that is, Broke. Mark was saying it's broken. He's like, I, and he's probably I need to fix this. It. But I, what, what an experience. The mechanics of that game. Versailles. It's there's awesome. gonna, there's an interview with Mark Cohen about Versailles. That game's awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm well, it's a mix set of, on that. It's a mix of war game elements, negotiation. I mean, even set collection and other Euro style mechanics. I, very fascinating. Yeah, the influencing and the diplomacy yeah, and back just and forth of stuff. Oh, awesome. that's a great game. And but anyway. My number one moment in a similar vein was we did that, but it was we all we went out to lunch together after that. Yeah. And that was in, that to me was the entirely surreal part. It's like, I'm just, I'm just sat here eating some food. So yeah, we had fried chicken. From, we were with Mark Herman, Hawkeye. you and me, and with Hawkeye. And, one of Mark's friends. And... Listening to those guys, I've, I've just sat there just like, I'll keep my mouth shut. Don't make, yeah. don't make an idiot out of myself. Yeah. But listening to those guys talk about like non war gaming yeah. stuff, just about a little bit of politics, a little bit of yeah, history, history, the things, yep. the things that they've done in their lives, their past, yep. You know, and you know, you talk about all the old SPI stuff that he did, Victory Games, Avalon Hill stuff that he worked with and designed for, just talking about his old experiences. It's, there's a wealth of knowledge to be had there, which was just fascinating. But like, that was that was surreal to me because like we've played a lot of his games, and I feel like I understand some of the ways that he thinks about things. Yeah, which is usually very forward thinking compared to other designers. Well, and I think he's also willing to try new things too. Well, a lot of times, and he even made the comment he could just churn it out, churn out game after game after game with some of the similar mechanics. But he is trying to create something different every time. But what he said, he says is. I want to make the game I want to make. Yeah, right. He right. doesn't, and he, he has a reputation care. to be able to do that. Yeah, he doesn't care. But people are like, oh, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And he's like, I'm going to make what I want. Because that's, I don't want to do that. I want to make this thing instead. Yeah. yeah. So he, he comes up with these really creative and different designs, which, you know, yeah. some of them are insanely complex. Some of them spawn like a whole, like the Godfather of CDGs that we talk about. Yeah. You know, yeah. spawns a whole series of games. Yeah. So that was just cool sitting down and having lunch and just having like a, a non. And, playing game scenario, yeah. just a situation and, like that was really fun. And they just invited us to lunch. I'm like, what the heck? What? <laughs> we, had, we had packed sandwiches. Now, we ended up paying for that lunch. But we had packed sandwiches and because our wives you know, wanted us to kind of go economically. And that <laughs> was one of the ways <laughs> we, we were... We just had these like, sweating ham and cheese sandwiches <laughs> in our bags. And I was prepared to eat. I was prepared then... to die that <laughs> afternoon, frankly. But it was um, like, oh, just... Just yeah. sat down, had lunch, and just it was, talked. It was we were awesome. there for like an hour and a half. Yeah, it was just awesome. Picking each other's brains. Then we went back and played Gettysburg, and yeah. that was even more awesome. And then we had a rest of the. So I, yeah, that was a great moment. Um, we had dozens of others. Oh I, I could, 
if we didn't get that. mentioned right here, it's not because that sucked. Yeah. It's just this. There's so much. We were there for like two days basically, yeah. and I could regale everything, yeah. every moment for two days because it was just yeah. that was the probably the best convention I've ever been to. Well, and and we both kind of said similar things. The very first day, I felt like a kid in a candy store. Oh, it was insane. We walked in that that open gaming room, and I was like, "Look at all these designers. Look at all these games. Look at all these unpublished games. Look at all these people playing games." It was like we were going from one thing to the next. And we didn't have enough time. We only had, you know, You were sat down doing an interview with someone, and I just walked around the open game just to yeah. see what people were playing. Yeah. And it was like, oh, there's Pendragon. Yep. Oh, there's Combat Commander. Oh, well, there's, and then you'd there's see OST. Terraforming Mars. I mean, you'd yeah. see all kinds of... But seeing so many war games being played was pretty cool. Yeah, Because, yeah. you know, you go to Orange, yeah, you don't go to Gen Con, and they're playing all the Euro games. But seeing all the war games being played, I was like, oh, there are people that like these. Yeah, right. <laughs> that was, that was that really was cool. fun. But then, we also felt like chickens with our heads cut off too, because I, I felt like I couldn't focus, and we had people ask, "Hey, can we can we talk to you?" And we're like, "Oh, we got this commitment," and and I'm like, "Well, we can go do this quick and try to come back," and it was just really yeah, there was there was there was a lot of we were not there for long enough, so we learned that next yeah. year we're going to go for an extra bit of time, at so least we, one full we, day. We've more. got more time to like sit yeah. there and meet more people because there was so many impromptu moments where. We could have sat down and done more interviews or yeah. demo more things for you yeah. guys, but it was just a t- it's time fun. constraints in the end. It's fun. The other part, so getting the candy store, all the vendors were there. I think Compass Games were there, GMT had a stall, Lock and Low, Flying Pig, Academy Games, Academy Games were there, uh, MMP were there. Who was the people in the corner? Um, I can't remember. It was like... Spearpoint? Yeah, Spearpoint 43, but I can't nice. remember. And that. there was a couple other distributors, but yeah, you know, we know a lot of those guys, so it's always fun to just go in there and chat. But, God, and this is a, this is, I'm a cheapskate. <laughs> Compass Games are pretty pricey. If you look yeah. on their website, pricey. Everything there was like, off, at off least 30%, discount, off. 30% off. Plus, you didn't pay no tax. sales tax and you didn't no pay shipping, shipping you. because you ordered it off of. So we picked up, we put, right. I splurged. We spent a lot of money there on that. So you're going to see some Compass games coming from us soon, which that was well, very exciting. Yeah. And, and other games, Lock and Load, Lock and Load, Publishing, Lock and Load. They, they have um, the 5.0 tactical rules coming to Big Binder. That's exciting. So yeah. we're going to go through some solo stuff with those as yeah. well soon. So so my three Compass games, I bought uh, Battle Hymn Volume 1, Pea Ridge, and Gettysburg. I've been wanting this for since it came out about four or five months ago. Um, Montelamar, The Anvil of Fate, designed by Adam Starkweather. Uh, huge game, five maps, a thousand counters. It's huge. Big monster game. Big monster one. game. And my third and final one is Revolution Road uh, by John Paniski. We actually, that was our very final That was a good way to wrap it up, too. It was John Paniski and we stayed in uh, Double Dogs. We stayed in the same little hotel. Yep. That was cute. So we just met in the breakfast and talked it up for just had a chat. So that's minutes. coming soon as well, yeah. an interview about that. But I'm really excited about Bloody Mohawk. Uh, tactical, tactical level French and Indian War. We met the designer of this, Bill Molyneux. I sat next to him when we ate for dinner two hours, first night for a couple hours, and he had so much to say about this game. Yeah, and I'm excited like, about this one. Uh, yeah, I'm like, he's got laser cut cameras. We'll it's, show you those in an unboxing. It but looks like, beautiful. Ooh. Yeah, I picked up Line of Judah because it's when they when they announced that, I was like, what? It's the war for Ethiopia in 1935, so it's it's all about Italian colonialism and expansion. They invade Ethiopia. And then there's like a second scenario where it's the British trying to liberate that bank. So an entirely unique game. Eclectic. Yeah. And, and it's, there's some really cool mechanics. Like the tribesmen, you have, it's an unknown combat factor. Yeah. Until you get yeah. into combat and flip them and over. Be, kind of like VC in a Vietnam War game. Yeah. Typically. It's similar. But but I don't know what they are either. No right. one knows Got what it. they are. They're hidden. So you just, you're moving the bed hoping for the best. Yeah. But yeah. beautiful game. And I love the box. The box. Uh, show them. The, I mean, like how? What a like, phenomenal! Kind of like that. That's an amazing box. But this is a cool. I'm, this is probably the only game about that war. I, now I've that said I that it's not. Of. There's probably ten there's others. Probably but. more. But, but what a cool opportunity to play something that's not World War Two, World War One, or yeah. like the American Revolution, right? Or the Civil War. You know, yeah. something totally different. I mean, it's World War Two, but it's it's. Uh, it just it's, looks awesome. It's a game. And then I picked up Guam, Return to Glory. 
And this is because I was jealous of you. With Saipan. You have Saipan. <laughs> we played that last year, and that game was awesome. that game was fine. I loved that game. And, so, and now I'm jealous that you have the second they, volume. They, 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 so. I, they had this, and I, I had to get my hands on it. And it was, with the, with the discount they had there for the convention prices, yeah. you can't say no to that. No, it, uh, no. It's so... I mean, I, I basically got about, in essence, 40 to 45% off this stack of games. Yeah. That, that's just, how awesome that was. And, and I don't buy a ton of games. I just don't. You, you know, spend more than we really do. It's hard to justify $120 for a game. But I did buy these three because the prices were too hard to turn away. The other the other thing that we've probably talked about this earlier is we have a prototype copy of Beneath the Mid. So, big thanks to Greg Smith for this. Yeah. Um, so, we're going to do some videos about that. You know, Silent Victories, The Hunters. Yeah, it, the it's hunters. Solo, the Submarine game. Warfare, the Italians in World War II, in the Mediterranean, and... And it's very this is cool. prototype copy, so yeah, yeah, a lot of the stuff's different from what it would be, but it's his his the med with a little patrol chance going on. So that's coming up soon as well. It was so he was just Greg was just unloading stuff. Yeah, he was like I've got zeppelins in the woods. Yep. I've got yep. this in the woods. He's got so many games in his brains coming out. Yeah, and he's got a new deal with Compass, so there's gonna be a lot of new titles from him yeah. coming through them as well, which is very exciting. And then we got Tank on Tank, Tank on uh, Tank, West Lock, Front. Lock David Heath is. They have so, so many cool games. We've got Tank on Tank, which is a tactical tank war game. Yeah. Which is exciting. And then there's an East Front version. This is West Front. Yep. And there's a ton of stuff for that. So yeah. we actually have to wrap this up. Yep. We're <laughs> running out of time. We do. But that's kind of just a, somewhat of a gist. There's going to be a ton of interviews and stuff coming from us. I think we have. Nine videos. And there's a couple up already. Yeah. WBC is something I highly recommend. If you're Absolutely. into wargaming, you, you want to go there at least once in your life for the Mecca. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplayers8.com. And I'm Grant.